What's going on guys? Welcome back. In this video, we are going to be solving leak code problem number one, numero uno, and it's going to be the two sum problem. So get excited guys. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the code. So let's get started by checking out the prompt, guys. So they're going to give us an array of integers and a target, and they want us to return the indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. So really quickly, it's pretty straightforward. If we just look at this example in this array here, the reason we get back zero and one is because two plus seven equals nine, which is our target, and two is at index zero, seven is at index one in our array, and they explain it down here. And then, you know, down here, we get back one and two because two plus four is six and two is at index one, four is at index two. So it's pretty straightforward. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and hop straight into the code. So the first thing I notice, guys, is that the problem is asking us to return an integer array. So what I'm going to do to start this off is create that array. And we know it has to be an integer array. I'll call it result. And then down here at the bottom, we're just going to return that result. And we know that in order to solve this problem, we just need to go through this numbers array that they give us and see if we can find values A and B such that A plus B equals our target, which we can call C or something like that. So I'm just gonna add that as a note here in my problem. It's trying to find two numbers such that A plus B equals C, okay? So the easiest way to accomplish this would be to use nested for loops and what we could do is start, let me just uh, go ahead and get my array, copy and paste it over here so we can take some notes with it. Let me just create a multi-line comment here as well and paste this in here. Cool. So this is our array. So I'm going to put seven at the end, guys, and put 15 right here just to illustrate this concept a little bit better. So basically, we would we would start one loop at two and then within that have another loop that goes and checks every number after two. And we would just have some logic in there that says, hey, if any of those two numbers equal the target, then we know we can return the indices of those and solve our problem. So let's go ahead and just code this out. So basically we would say for i in zero up to nums.count. So this would start our loop here at the first index, x, the first index of the array then we would want to check every number after that within this iteration, right? And then we would go to 15 and check all the numbers after 15, then go to 11, check all the numbers after that. So that's where this second for loop comes in. And here's the trick to this. We would say for J in I plus one up to, but less than nums.count. So what this does is it's going to take a look at what I is at the time, right? So it starts at zero, then it's going to start this second loop at one because zero plus one is one, and it's going to go to the end of the array. And at each point, we're just going to check and see if any of any of these guys plus two is equal to our target. So we would say if nums I plus nums J equals target, then we would just say return uh, i comma j. So you guys could also say results equals i j, which we can do for now, and we can discuss why the other way is better in just a second. Let's just go ahead and run this to see if it works. So we notice that this does solve our problem, right? But this is not the most optimal solution for this problem. So we're gonna go over how to optimize this version of it and then create an entirely different algorithm to solve this program or this algorithm in a way more efficient fashion. So to illustrate why this is not the most effective way with the brute force approach, guys, I'm just gonna add a print statement here. So I'm gonna say print and let's just print out the result of nums i plus nums j. So if I run my program, we'll see that I get a bunch, my program continues to run even after I found the correct solution. So you guys will notice that I get a bunch of print statements here, right? But the correct answer here is nine. So all of these additional 
um, loops or iterations of my loop that I did were completely unnecessary. So I'm getting the right answer, but it's not the most efficient way of doing it. So basically what I want to do is as soon as I find the two numbers that satisfy this condition, I just want to return those numbers. So, or sorry, the indices of those numbers. And this way, as soon as I find my solution, the execution of my program will stop right then and there. So let me run this again. And you'll notice that we get back a single print statement and it's just gonna be nine. So yep, that's all we get back. And you guys notice that we didn't get back all of those other print statements because our program stops as soon as it hits this guy. So to illustrate this a little bit better, I'll change this around where I put seven at the end of my test case. So you guys could just go to the test case tab right here and you could customize this to have whatever test case you want. You guys will see that we get back, you know, a couple more print statements, but it's still a more efficient solution. So at first we get back 17, then 13, then nine, and then we stop because we found our answer. So that is a, a good way of optimizing the brute force approach, but the brute force approach in and of itself is not the most optimal solution for this problem. It's in fact, the worst way to solve this problem. So if we were to look at the big O notation or runtime complexity of this on this chart here, we would be in the O N squared uh, time complexity. And that's because we have to use that nested for loop and essentially visit every element in the array twice, basically. So we are at O N squared. So we notice that as my array gets larger, my time complexity sig significantly increases, which is very bad. We can solve this problem in O N time, which you can see is way more effective than O N squared, right? This goes parabol parabolic in terms of its time complexity, and we can see that it is terrible, right? So this guy is fair, uh, which is what we want for this problem. So let's talk about how we can accomplish this. Well, we're gonna be using something called a map or a dictionary. And basically what we can do is use it as a lookup tool to see if we can find the complement of this equation, right? So imagine we are looking for a number B such that A plus B equals C. Well, we could say that, hey, if I have B, which equals C minus A, right? This is what's known as the complement of B. And we can store all of those values in a map to look it up. Then we know that we have solved our problem. So that's what we're going to be doing to solve this more efficiently, guys. So let's go ahead and code it out. And then I'll break it down a little bit further because I know that sounds a little bit confusing. So... Let's go ahead and just delete all this code or you guys could comment it out if you'd like. But basically I'm gonna create a map here and it's going to be an integer to integer dictionary. So basically we're gonna have this key value store and it's going to store an integer as the key and have an associated value as the key. So we're gonna go over how to populate this dictionary in just a second. So if you guys are uncomfortable or unfamiliar with dictionaries, I highly recommend checking out a video instructional on maps and when if you're watching this in the leap code killer course um, i will have a video posted on this in the data structures intro section but if you guys aren't comfortable with maps or how to use them i highly recommend checking that out so anyway guys let's continue with the solution to the problem we're still going to need to run a for loop here so we're going to say for i in zero up to nums dot count and what we need to do is store the complement here in a value. So I'm gonna say let comp equal target minus nums i. So now that I have this complement value, right? So I'm going to simply do a lookup in my dictionary and see if I can find that value in my dictionary. And if I can return the associated value with it, which in this case will be the index of that number. So I'm gonna say if let index equals map comp return i in the index. And if we can't find that, um, then we just need to make sure that we actually populate this map with the correct value. So we're just going to store nums i and its associated index. So I'm going to say map nums i default zero equals i. And you guys will notice that this is going to solve our problem too. We just need to add a return statement down here. So outside of my for loop, just go ahead and say return some blank array. So if we obviously can't find any two values that satisfy this condition, we would just return a blank array. So let's run this and see if it works. 
So we guys know, you guys notice that this works as well. So what I want us to do to break this down, guys, and make it easier to understand is actually add some print statements here so we can see what's happening at every step of the problem. So first thing, let's comment out this return statement just so that we can see what's happening at every iteration of the problem. And below this line here where we set up, where we populate the map with values, let's go ahead and say print comp is comp and then let's print the map as well. And then let's just print out like a line with a bunch of dashes to get some separation here. And let's run our code and talk about what's happening line by line. So this is our input array, guys. Remember, we modified it slightly from what we got back in the example. We just put seven at the end to make it more interesting. But let's go ahead and just scroll down and take a look at all these print statements, which is really going to help us make sense of the solution. So we're just going to break this down step by step. So basically, we've created our map here. And then we start looping through our nums array, right? And we store this complement in a value, which is equal to target minus nums i. And if you guys remember the logic, we're trying to find two numbers such that a plus b equals c. So the complement of b would equal c minus a. And on the flip side, the complement of a would equal b or c minus b. So that's what we're storing here, right? In this complement value. So here we see that the complement is seven first up because two is the first value in our array. Nine minus two is seven. So this piece of code that comes up next is very important, guys. So what this is doing is trying to look up the complement in our dictionary because we know that if the complement exists in the dictionary that we have solved our problem because we have seen that number before, which is the number that we're looking for, right? We are currently looking at two, the complement is seven. So if seven is in my dictionary, I know I've seen it before and two plus seven satisfies the conditions of my problem, it equals nine. So. I'm trying to look that up and see if it's in there. And it's not because there's nothing in our map. So then we go down to line 12 where we actually populate our map with a value. So we're saying, hey, in the future, if we ever see seven again, I just want to look up and, and see if two exists in the dictionary and give back this index right here, which is the location of two in the array, which is what I need in this situation, right? I need to know if two is in the dictionary and if it is what index that it's at, because that's what the problem's asking me to return, the indices of the values that add up to my target. So that's why we get back the complement is seven. And then currently our map is two and two is at index zero. So then we move on to the next value, right? The complement is negative six because nine minus 15 in this case is negative six. And then we try to find that in our dictionary. And we obviously can't because um, the complement of that doesn't exist in our map. So it just stores 15 at the one index. So we keep going. Same thing happens for negative two. Um, or sorry, when the complement is negative two. And then this is what our map looks like. 11 is at index two, 15 is at index one, two is at index zero. And here on this last iteration is where we actually solve the problem, right? So let's break this down because this is the key to understanding the solution. So we are looking at the complement here, right? What is the complement of seven such that uh, some number plus seven equals nine. Well, it's two, right? So in this case, the complement is two. And when we go to look that up in our dictionary, in this case, we have two in the dictionary. So when we go to do that lookup, it says, oh, hey, dude, two's there. And that's exactly what you're trying to find. Because in relation to the number seven and the number nine, two is the value that we need. And we need the index that it is located at in the original array of nums. So we find that value and then this gives us back the index of it, right? That's the value associated with two. And then we stop there and we return I, which is the current index that we're on in the array, which is seven. And we needed to look up and find two, which is in our map and it's at index zero. So this would return three and zero. And luckily for us guys, we can return the numbers in any order. So we could return it as zero one or one zero, it doesn't matter. So really quickly, just to make sure this works with all text test cases, guys, go ahead and delete that. And let's uncomment our return statement. And let's just go ahead and hit submit and see what this gives us back. So we notice that that does solve our problem and the numbers look really, really good here, right guys? It's better than 91.72% of all solutions in terms of runtime and beats 86.4 in terms of memory. 
So that is gonna wrap it up for this video, guys. That is leak code problem number one, the two sum problem. We went over how to solve it in a really good way and a really bad way and went over the differences between the two. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.